If you Google, when are you allowed to hike Mount Fuji? The top result that comes out is the climbing season for Mount Fuji is from early July through early September and climbing outside of this season is strictly prohibited. This isn't actually true, however. You can hike Mount Fuji earlier and later than this season. There are, however, some government rules regarding that. So during this video, I will explain why it is you might want to hike Mount Fuji outside of the normal season, and then what exactly those government rules and guidelines are, and finally, how you should go about doing that if it is what you want to do. Mount Fuji, with its summit at 3,776 meters, is the highest point, the highest mountain, the highest volcano in all of Japan. It's also commonly regarded as the most hiked mountain in the entire world. According to a 2008 census, there were 300,000 hikers in that year. And I would guess that maybe in years since then, it's been even more than that. Who knows, maybe at this point, half a million people are hiking Mount Fuji every year. I'll make another video later about all the history and the culture and things like that. In this video, I'd rather like to talk about off-season hiking. Why would you want to hike Mount Fuji during the off-season? Well, as it is the most hiked mountain in the world, you can imagine the crowds. If you go in July or August during the normal season, it's basically a non-stop parade walking up the entire time. You're constantly in front of someone else and behind someone else. You can't decide your own pace. There's vending machines and huts, and it really doesn't feel like you're hiking a mountain so much as just walking in a very long queue. It's really, in my opinion, not the ideal experience doing it during the peak season. And so that's why I think you might be interested in hiking it pre-season. Last month in May, I guided five groups on five separate days up Mount Fuji in the pre-season. And during that time, there were a number of other hikers up there, but it was not at all crowded. And for most of the hike, there was no one else in sight. It's just from time to time, you'd pass someone else, just like on another mountain like this one where I am right here, Mount Iwate. So, what are the rules for hiking Mount Fuji? Well, the government actually has made a PDF, which it translated into English and another of other languages. I'll put a link to that PDF in the description of the video so you can see it for yourself. But basically, you have to make a hiking plan, which is a form you can download, and submit that in advance to the local police. This can be done by fax, yes, because it's Japan, um, or you could send it in advance as well. You also need to have proper equipment and skill, though this is subjective. And they, of course, request that you leave nothing on the mountain. Um, normally, there are all of these lodges at each of the stages of the mountain going up, but in the preseason, they are all sealed and locked up tight. You cannot go in any of them. So there are no bathrooms whatsoever from the fifth station when you start until the summit. Nothing. You can't go in any of those buildings. Hiking in the off season is definitely dangerous though. And that's why it is important to be prepared, to be fit, and to have proper equipment. Even in May and in June, there's a lot of snow, especially after the seventh and eighth stations. And you should be always hiking with an ice axe, a helmet, crampons, and have, of course, appropriate clothing, food, water, everything else like that. And you should be very careful about the weather because it can be very dangerous on bad weather day days and should not be attempted. There's also no mass transit during the preseason, and so basically you shouldn't try to hike it on your own. I think for 90% of people, it makes sense to hire a guide and go with a group in the preseason. This is the best experience. I started recently working for a company guiding hikes up Mount Fuji. And so in May, as I said, I guided five groups on five different days, in some cases, two days in a row. It was eight days. In eight days, I guided five times at Mount Fuji. And so that was uh, kind of hard in terms of not getting a lot of sleep, but it was also a great experience and I really had a good time. So I can tell you that you really do need to hire a guide and go with a group. As part of the guiding process, we teach people how to use ice axes, the crampons, we provide that sort of equipment, and we have safety training. I'm certified as a wilderness first responder, as are all the guides that work for this company. If you're interested in who to hire and what to do, I've put some links for that sort of thing in the description as well. And it's also a lot of fun to hike with other people. You meet a lot of great people from all over the world on these hikes. On one of the hikes, I actually guided someone who is legally blind up to 
Well, I won't tell too much about that because I think I may make a vlog of that later. People do die nearly every year on Mount Fuji. And so I do think it really makes sense to hire a company. In the preseason, you can't go up overnight and uh, see the sunrise like you do in uh, July and August. You'd be leaving early in the morning and then coming back down by late afternoon. And that's the way you want to do it in the snowy season. It can get really cold at night. That said, I think it's a fantastic experience and worth doing. Not everyone should attempt to hike Mount Fuji in the preseason. You should be able to run five or 10 kilometers easily, probably less than five minutes a kilometer. You should be someone who's hiking and is comfortable going up and uh, doing a lot of ascent. It is in the preseason, the Fuji no Mira route that we're doing. And that is about uh, 1,350, 1,400 meters in elevation gain over 12 or 13 kilometers, which doesn't sound like much, but at the high elevation, at the high altitude, it does, um, yeah, tire you out. And this is an eight or a nine hour hike for most people. And so the companies that you would hire to guide you will often screen you by asking you about your physical situation and may um, say that it's not something that they want to uh, attempt with you if you're not judged uh, to be physically fit enough. And it's a good idea to listen to them. They know what they're talking about. The hikes that I guide include, in the preseason, teaching everyone how to use an ice axe, um, the crampons, of course, as well as, when there's enough snow, using a sort of a butt sled to sled down from around the ninth or uh, ninth and a half station down for a few hundred meters, which is also fun, sledding down Mount Fuji. A note about altitude sickness. A lot of people after around 3,500 meters do start experiencing altitude sickness. In the five hikes that I guided last month, there were three people who got mild uh, altitude sickness symptoms. They were able to make it to the summit despite that, but some people felt uh, dizzy, lightheaded, got a headache. Some people felt sort of tired, but they were up there for a brief enough time that it didn't result in any sort of emergency situation. And it was basically okay. It's just something to keep in mind. And just because you've been up to 3,700, 3,800 meters before and not gotten altitude sickness, it doesn't mean that it won't happen this time. There's always a chance that you'll get it this time. It comes suddenly. Personally, I feel a little lightheaded above uh, 3,500, 3,600 meters, but I haven't gotten a headache or felt nauseous or anything like that in my personal experience. But again, I could feel that next time. We'll see. One of the fun things about hiking Mount Fuji five times last month is that I met these incredibly strong older Japanese men who hike it again and again and again. There's a man named Mr. Jitsukawa who is nicknamed Mr. Fuji because uh, when I met him, the last time I met him, he had hiked it 2,181 times. And so now I'm sure he's uh, gone beyond that. I also met two other guys who'd hiked it more than a thousand times. So there are these people who are doing it all year round and they're in their 60s and 70s. That said, for most people, it's something only to do in July and August. However, I have to say, hiking Mount Fuji is basically done for bragging rights. There aren't any trees, any plants, any flowers. And so personally, I find hiking volcanoes up here, like Mount Iwate, Mount Chokai, places like that to be still yet more beautiful. But I understand for the glory, you have to hike Mount Fuji at least once. And so I don't recommend hiking it five or 10 times in a month. I think uh, just once will do you. But yeah, it's worth doing that one time at least. At any rate, I hope this has been interesting and I hope I've opened you up to the possibility that you are allowed to hike Mount Fuji um, basically any time of year if you are properly prepared, notify the police, have all the necessary gear, and you should always hire a guide and go with a group. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the trails.